old things that came out of the 930 uh, that, uh, oh, by the way, that Dan DiVittorio is now running is that uh, they want to make sure that all the bench chiefs, you've all talked to your folks uh, concerning, uh, you know, uh, when we when we do start increasing, both at your own facilities and, you know, NCE and NCW, make sure that folks know when they're going to be coming in, if they're at the 50% mark with their mission partner or just where they stand. And then, of course, bringing you another one man and today what are we going to get into we are going to get into um what is like to you know what's life like with the scat pack man basically with the dodge charger scat pack although i think this might fit the bill for either the scat pack or the challenger but i mean i'm sorry the charger or the challenger but we're going specifically because i have a charger right i don't have a challenger we're going to talk about life with a charger scat pack man um you know some of the some of the good things, some of the bad things. Um, nothing too crazy. It's not like a list or anything like that or whatever the do's or don'ts. It's nothing like that. It's just uh, you know kind of the things that I've noticed over you know the last about a year, years and a half and change or whatever that I've owned this this car. Um, you know some of the things that I that I've noticed and picked up along the way. Disclaimer: I always got to put the disclaimer out there because for some reason people like to take what you know what people put out on on YouTube videos. And they like to take it as gospel. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is not gospel. Results are not typical. They may vary. Results may vary. So your, you know, your experiences. If you ever have, if you have this car, one, or if you plan on buying this car, your experiences might be different than mine, or than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's experience is always different. But it does serve as a guide, I guess, if you want to call it that. So uh, hopefully, this is a guide as to things that you can expect when, if you own a Charger Scat Pack. But first. I gotta go to the gas station because if you cannot see, I am on E. Like, Jesus Christ, look, it even says low range. Let me say what's the name. So I'm on E. So because I'm on E, I'm gonna head to the gas station before I make a, another video saying, why did this keep happening to me? And then y'all gonna get on me and be like, man, that's your own damn fault, man. Get to the damn gas station. Ironically, I had to go get gas, but the first thing I want to talk about is gas, man. So I, I covered this before in one of my other uh, uh, videos, and you know, and, and I know the whole thing. First of all, I want to apologize for the sun because uh, you know, obviously, sun's coming up right now, so um, it's all in my face. But anyway, but thing is, right? I want to say gas, right? I know, I know, we covered gas before, and. Uh, it's one of those things, I mean, you know, people may not really think about it, whatever, especially if you're coming from like a SXT or RT or something like that, you may not realize that these cars, 
you know, they're very sophisticated engines, man. They're very sophisticated motors. Um, so you gotta put, not you gotta put high octane, 93. I know some places don't have 93; they only have 91 or whatever. Here in Florida, luckily, we have 93. Um, so, you, but anyway, but you gotta put the highest octane available in your area. You gotta put that in your car. All right, so you can't go, you can't do 87, you can't do 89. So, depending on how you drive and what your uh, you know your mileage is on a daily basis or whatever then obviously it's going to dictate how much you got to put in there now before all this stuff happened as far as you know lockdown and COVID-19 and everything else before all of this stuff man I used to drive almost a hundred and something miles a day so I was putting in about four hundred dollars a month luckily over the last couple months I haven't really been putting anything in this car other than maybe like 20 bucks here and there so um you know what I'm saying so I've been, I've been kind of lucky I'm looking at the police over here she's looking at me so i'm looking at her like what what you gonna do you wanna race no nah, i'm just playing i don't want no smoke <laughs> it's something you got to think about like i said a lot of people are like well you know if you're buying this car you're not buying it to save gas mileage and yada 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 yes of course everybody knows it's a v8 it's a big v8 granted so on and so forth but there might be some young kids some young kids out there who may not necessarily know the impact so yes uh you know just the fact that you gotta always have you gotta make sure you put high octane in this car man so that's a factor you got to put in there so again not not a not a big mystery but something that you got to think about something that uh you know people potential owners of this car you know you got to put in there and consider now the next thing i want to talk about as far as um with this car i don't know i i don't know why dodge right decided on this car to put Actually, I got lucky because I got 275s on mine. I don't understand why they decided to go 245s on like the regular scat. And if you get the, the dynamic package, you get 275s. So if you guys don't know my car, I have the dynamics package, which basically comes with all of the uh, the Hellcat stuff, basically, right? So you get the big brakes, you know, you get the, the, the bigger wheels and tires and all that. You get the Hellcat wheels, basically, with the 275s and everything else. But honestly i don't think it's enough for this car um the 275 is i can see on the scat but the scat should come automatically with 275s like it shouldn't even be a question you got almost 500 horsepower you know what i'm saying going to these cars and you want to put a 245 series tire on it doesn't make any sense at all these cars definitely should have 275s at a minimum to go on the scat pack the Hellcat should come with the 305 easy, automatic. 305 with the upgradable 315 if you want to, you know, uh, uh, whatever, go to that package or whatnot. But it should automatically be 305 for the, for the Hellcat, regardless, Challenger or Charger. Automatic 305 with the upgraded package of 315 from the factory. That's my opinion. I don't know. But I find it kind of crazy that... Uh, you know these cars come out with so much power now in these days and they're not really putting them out now granted i know the wide bodies are coming out with the with the bigger tires and the bigger wheels but you're not getting it's, they're not it's not any more power so the regular body should come out with the 305s and 315s too and you can't say that it don't fit because people put 305s and 315s on their regular narrow bodies all day long with no issues so it can't be a, a fitment issue it can't be this and that or whatever um, yeah, man, I think Dodge should have, they should have came out with a better plan for that. Because people are, I mean, it's damn near scary sometimes, and you know, to drive these cars, especially, I would imagine a Hellcat. Actually, I mean, I drove a Hellcat with the 275s, and yeah, man, like, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, 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 you, you gotta know how to handle that beast. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so that's the second thing, is these cars should have came with bigger tires out the factory, from the scat packs they should have came out with 275s out the box and hellcat should have came out with 305s or upgradable 315s period now <laughs> the third thing i'm gonna tell you and this was kind of a funny one man the third thing i'm gonna tell you about owning one of these cars and i don't know what it is about all the other uh, everybody else that has all these other manufacturers you know all these other cars now but for some reason, everybody wants to come at Mopar. 
So you're gonna get trolled up the yin yang all day, every day when you're driving this car. And that's from anybody who has a Mustang, anybody who has a Camaro, anybody who has anything that they think is decently fast, they are going to try you. Now, if you are one of those people that love, you know, to show what you got, then, and you know, you want all the smoke, hey, perfect, get one of these cars. But, if you're one of those people like me, you just like, you know, just trying to you just trying to chill, hang out, you know what I'm saying? You're just trying to cruise. Bro, I'm telling you right now, you are going to get trolled all day, every day. Oh, man, it got dark. You're going to get trolled all day, every day, constantly. I don't know what it is, man. People just love to try you like they, especially, especially if you got any kind of modifications on your car. You got exhaust, you got whatever wheels is lowered or whatever whatever anything anything that looks like you you did something to your car you're gonna get tried all day every day again it might be a good thing i'm not saying it's a bad thing again these are not good or bad things these are just things you know what i'm saying so so count that for what it is uh take that for what it is whether if it's a good or bad thing i don't know you know what i'm saying but it, it's gonna happen a lot of y'all more part people out there want all the smoke so <laughs> the next thing I've noticed with this car, man, after owning it for a year and a half, like, and, and not even just owning it a year and a half, like, really off the bat, like, this car is really, really, really comfortable, man. So you have, like, a lot of people that are, like, big people like me, you know what I'm saying? You got a lot of tall people, you have a lot of small people, whatever, man. At the end of the day, like, this car is a literally one-size-fits-all, uh, so to speak. Like, it doesn't matter if you're big, tall, fat, skinny, whatever the case, you know what I'm saying? You are most likely gonna be able to fit in these cars. And that goes for the Charger or the Challenger, man. You will be able to fit in this car. You can take this car on a long road trip. If you guys don't know, a couple months ago, we went out to the uh, 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 um, Dunk Master vs. Demonology out there in Dallas. We took my boys, Garage Drivens. Shout out to my boy, Garage Driven. Um, make sure I go follow him and check out his channel if you haven't already, Garage Driven. But he has a bagged 392 Daytona. And um, we took his car, man, all the way out to Dallas. What was that, a 12 hour trip? Something like that, 12, 13 hour trip. And it was comfortable the whole way, man. The entire way. Granted, he was on bags as well, but it was comfortable the entire way, man. So this car is super comfortable. Obviously, you know, I got the Charger, so it's a four door. Um, so easily fits your family in there, man, you know. Uh, uh, kids, you know, when I used to pick them up from school, whatever, from last school year, you know, they get in the back, obviously, with the four doors. I don't got to worry about getting out the car and everything else. It's actually, to be honest, um, I was this close. If you don't know, I was this close to getting a Mustang with the PP, what was it, the PP2 package. Um, uh, so, you know, like the sport package or whatever the case. And it comes with the 305s on it, by the way. But anyway, but uh, I was this close, literally, I was this close to signing. As a matter of fact, it was going to be a couple thousand dollars cheaper than this car and um i just couldn't do it man the reason why i could not do the mustang was because it's a coupe and i was like i just i need a four door because if you don't know i had a bmw 335 i uh, 335i um before this one and i just couldn't go back to a coupe I mean, like i had a couple coupes in my life but especially now that i gotta be you know i was worried about picking up the kids, dropping off the kids, and practicing school and everything else, I was like, I cannot go back to a coupe as my daily driver. Uh, obviously, a second car, third car, cool, no problem, but I couldn't do it as my daily driver. So, no coupe for me. But, you, you know, four people can sit in this car, no problems, all day long, take a take a nice trip, whatever, hour trip somewhere, whatever it is, and nobody be complaining, you know what I'm saying? So, there's that. This car is again relatively speaking for what it's worth is surprisingly tame man so these cars even the hellcats man like they are because i guess because they got all this sophistication and everything else and they're new and all that um you know they don't they don't really wake up until you want them to wake up now when you want them to wake up they wake up like a mother you know what i'm saying like there is no question about it they get up and go they get squirrely they get whatever they back to uh, talking about the tires you know what i'm saying like they could become dangerous but if you don't until you don't until you do that the car is surprisingly tame right so like for those 
of us that have wives or whatnot, and I don't mean to say it in the manner that, you know, uh, uh, women can't drive or whatever. I'm not saying that at all. But for the most part, like, you know, a lot of some women, not a lot, some women are not really comfortable with driving, you know, big horsepower cars and big, you know, cars with big motors and everything else or whatever the case. Um, but I'm telling you, man, like, it, it, even if, it, it, you know what, not even just women, people and people in general because there's a lot of people like that whether you're male or female and um but you know what i'm saying but surprisingly um this car is super tame and like i said there's a lot of people that would be kind of intimidated by this car but there's no need to be intimidated because like i said it, it until you wake it up i mean it drives like a normal car even the hellcats uh, ironically you could drive a hellcat and you would not know that you're driving a car that has over 700 horsepower until you step on that gas like mash it all the way down when now when you mash it all the way down it's a wrap and you're gonna be all over the place but if you just drive like a normal person like you just you know like drive like a normal car then like i said surprisingly it's pretty tame and um, um pretty much anybody could drive it you know what i'm saying so like my wife could get in my car easily and drive my car and have no issues whatsoever and she's never been a person to like drive um like big you know like horsepower cars with especially wheel drive and everything else um but like i said she gets in my car drives it no problem because like she was intimidated at first but after she drove it once or twice she's like oh okay it's not too bad i gotta go into the store real quick um get some get a couple grocery items or whatever and then uh after that i'm gonna come right back out and then we're gonna talk about the rest I think this one this one touches a lot of people's hearts um i would i would say um but for the chargers there should have been a manual option um i know a lot of people you know like to go with the automatics now because it's faster so on and so forth but not everybody oh hold on let me put my seatbelt on damn hold on but not everybody wants to buy a car just for the track or to race everybody some people love just the driving experience so i don't understand i mean they they they, they had it available for the challenger i don't know i don't know if they have them for the 2020 still i think they might have done away with them especially on the wide body for whatever reason but um you know they should have had a, a, a manual option and granted i understand that's probably not cost effective for them to to uh uh make them and have them sitting on a lot because a lot of people buy more automatics nowadays but they should at least give it the option man so for those people that that go and spec out their car like they order their car they should at least be able to have the option to to go manual so therefore you make you basically um you know they're they're made to order i guess if, if that's if that's the case so you don't you know so maybe dealerships won't be able to like uh uh order manuals to have them you know for their lot but if a specific customer comes in and orders a manual and whatever in the charger or challenger they should be able to get that configuration um and then that, that way it'll be a little bit more cost effective for the company obviously because they don't want to just have man build manuals and them sitting on a lot and, and it takes months and months and months for them to sell so i understand that aspect of it but at the end of the day they should at least give it an option for people that want to that you know that spec out their own car and then and at the end of the day eventually you'll have those manuals in rotation because as people within three years or whatever the case if they trade the car in or do whatever within a year or two like a lot of people do nowadays if they trade their car in then you know there's manuals sitting on a lot used manuals on a lot that you know saying like i said they're they're out there now on the street and available for people but again um and, and you know then that's no cost to the dealership because or, or to the manufacturer because at the end of the day you know there it's it's already bought and it's now it's second hand you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day man um like i said there should be an option for that for that manual configuration um uh in the charger and the challenger like i said i think the challenger they might have done, done, done away with them so they need to bring that back even if it's a special order and maybe instead of six weeks six to eight weeks in order for you to wait your car wait for your car if you want a manual 
understand that it's probably going to be, you know, more along the lines of, of uh, 8 to 10 weeks, you know what I'm saying, or, or 10 to 12 weeks, whatever it is. But I'm sure people, people that really, really want a manual would wait for that, you know what I'm saying? The last thing I'm going to touch on, man, the last thing I'm going to touch on is the cost of modifications with these cars, comparably speaking to like the Mustangs or the Camaros or whatever, um, like, you know, the basically the competition of these cars. Oh man, they're kind of expensive. Um, you know, when you, when you compare it, when you compare them, um, they're kind of expensive, man. J literally just like part for part or whatever, um, or, or, or even like the availability of parts. Um, I don't think Mopar is there yet, uh, or, or the aftermarket, I should say for Mopar is there yet. And like I said, even though there's a lot of chargers out there or a lot of Mopars out there, I should say, um, still, man, for whatever reason, like, yeah, you could get the parts, but then they're a little bit more expensive than the norm. Um, well, like I said, again, comparably, comparably speaking, a little bit more expensive. And, uh, and on top of that, like, it, you know, it's just more expensive for you to work on the car, basically, or for you to get somebody to work on the car. Um, if you do it yourself, you may not be too bad, but for you to get the part and then have somebody work on the car, um, yeah, man, it costs a little bit more than your, you know, than your comparable Mustang or Camaro, man. So that, that I would, I, look again, I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. I'm just letting you guys know the things that I've noticed since I've been owning this car. And this is my first Mopar. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning these things as I go as well. But, um, but yeah, man, but, uh, I'm on the side of the road, my bad. And I'm just talking about the Scat Pack in general. Or actually, I mean, even the Hellcat because the Hellcat's now they're competing with the, the GT500 and everything else. So even still, you're still gonna find more things for those cars, um, even their higher end cars, or let's say the Z01, right? The Z01 is more uh, uh, compared to the Hellcat, obviously, than the Scat Pack. So yeah, so even like the higher, higher echelon cars, they're still gonna be able to find parts and, and a little bit cheaper than what we would for a Mopar. Just in what I've noticed, you know what I'm saying? Now, I haven't done anything, any big, big, you know, modification, especially to like performance-wise or whatever. So I can't speak on that. Um, but I'm just saying from me, just looking around and doing some shopping here and there, da, 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 it's just from what I've seen. And I will say this, man, also, and I know people are gonna be mad at me right now, but I'm just saying, look, at the end of the day, Mustang, I don't know what it is about Mustang, man, but they have, and I can say, man, they have the best sounding V8 out there, right? Right now, they do. As far as like regular cars, right? And I'm talking about supercars. I'm talking, I'm talking about regular V8, regular cars, middle, you know, people that can afford these cars, regular cars. Mustang, man, when you put an exhaust on there, you do like literally like a hundred dollar mod to the exhaust on a Mustang, it sounds phenomenal. Um, and people can hate on it all they want to, man, but it's true. I mean, Mustangs sound the best. They sound super beastly uh, when they when they do some uh, modifications to that exhaust. So, yeah, man, so Mopar, uh, granted, I mean, our cars sound good as well, but we're still not on the Mustang level as far as exhaust note, um, especially when it comes to modifications. But hey, that's neither here nor there. You know, that's all opinion based. Obviously, everybody has their own opinion, man. But with that being said, man, that's all I have. Again, this was not a list of good and bad things or anything like that. This was merely a list of things that I've noticed of owning a Dodge Charger Scat Pack to be more specific. Uh, like I said, people are gonna have different experiences or whatever the case, or they'll have different opinions and that's cool. Um, but it's just, it's just my thoughts. So I wanted to bring that guy, bring that to you guys. Um, like I said, don't take it as gospel, but kind of use it as a guide, I guess, if you are in the market for one of these cars and you know, if you want to take somebody's experience on it, man. So if you like, you can take my experience and, uh, and it's all good, man. If you got any questions or if you got any comments or whatever, make sure you guys leave that below. Oh, um, I started to put all the links of everything that I've um, basically bought like off of Amazon, um, like my, my, my springs and, um, what else did I have on there? Man, my springs, my camera, <laughs> um, what else? I'm going blank right now. But anyway, basically all the stuff that I bought that's easy access that you got, oh, my spacers, things like that. But yeah, so things like that, man, that I bought that, um, I have on my car, 
that I bought from Amazon. I'm starting to put the links in there so you guys could go into the description below and click on those links and, and, and you know, you can purchase those items if you want those. Okay, I know a lot of people always ask me, you know, what where did you get your springs and where specifically and da 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 da. So you guys could click on them and uh, it'll take you straight to where I got mine and you know, you can purchase them if you want. The last thing I want to mention in this video is July 5th, we are doing a huge, huge, huge cruise. Um, if you are in the Central Florida area, man, you make sure you want to come out to this, man. July 5th, we are starting out at the Orlando I at, well, we're meeting at 10 o'clock, leaving at 11. If you're in the Riverview, Brandon area, I'm having a meet, a pre-meet at the uh, racetrack off of Gibsonton, all right? Um, right next to 75, I-75. So racetrack off of Gibsonton, we're gonna meet there at 8.30, roll out at 9 sharp a.m. All right, so, so get over there and then meet up with everybody else and then we're gonna roll out from the Orlando Eye at 11 a.m. So we're gonna meet at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Orlando Eye, roll out at 11. If you're in the Brandon Riverview area and you wanna roll over there with me and a couple other people, then racetrack at 8.30 a.m. Gibsonton, all right? Right next to I-75. That's gonna be that's gonna be a huge, huge, huge cruise. We're, we're, we're trying to put together at least a hundred mop, uh, uh, not Mopar, a hundred muscle cars. So any muscle car is welcomed, man. It's any make a model that is a muscle car. You know what I'm saying? Camaros, Mustangs, obviously any Mopar, whatever the case, um, man, anything. You know what I'm saying? Even them, them Cadillac CTSs, the Vs, and all that good stuff. Like those are muscle cars too. I mean, they got Corvette and motors, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, so anything that's a muscle car, man, please, 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 if, 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 you're, um, if you're down the ride with us, do not feel like you uh, cannot come out. It's not a Mopar only event. It is a muscle car event. And we're trying to get over hundred cars to, uh, to to join that uh, cruise that day, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty dope. So make sure y'all uh, uh, stay tuned. If y'all got any questions, hit me up on IG. Man. Oh, that's another thing. Make sure y'all. Hey, if you if you are not following me on IG, man, make sure you go to my IG, man. Fat Cat eighty one eighty one. Go to my IG. Follow me over there. I'm trying to get up to about. I'm trying to get to that ten thousand follower mark. I'm at I'm close to six thousand right now. I'm trying to get to that ten thousand follower mark, man. Uh, so I can open up some other features on IG, man. So I think you, I think you get that when you get about ten thousand uh, followers. So go to my go to my uh, IG, man. Fat Cat eighty one eighty one. I do stories on there. I post pictures of my car all the time. You know whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, I post a lot of things, a lot of events or whatever it is I'm going to. I post it on there faster than I would on YouTube, obviously. Um, so uh, you'll be more informed on a day to day basis on IG than you would on YouTube. Um, just, it's just the nature of the game that you could get it out faster on IG. So make sure I go over there, Fat Cat eighty one eighty one. Follow me over there. All right. Other than that, that's it, man. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I know this is a long. I gotta stop. I try. I try to keep these videos short, man. I'm telling you, but I'm just a blabbermouth. Make sure y'all stay safe. Make sure y'all stay humble. Make sure y'all stay blessed. You know what I'm saying? Um, in these times that 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 we're in right now, uh, and make sure you guys stay cognizant of everything that's going on. Um, no matter what side you're on or what your beliefs are, or whatever the case, at the end of the day, we're all one people, man. We should, we should be, just be striving to make a better world for ourselves and for our children, regardless of, like I said, of what you believe in or whatever. There should be one common goal. Make this place a better place. Period. You know what I'm saying? So, other than that, man, again, appreciate y'all for watching my videos, these long-ass videos. I greatly appreciate y'all. Um, that's all I got, man. Stay true to yourself. Stay genuine because anything else will be on civilized, man. We out. Hey, that's